Hi, and welcome to Paper Root Scrapbooking. I'm Nadine, and today we're gonna to keep talking about what to do with all the things after attending a big weekend retreat. Okay, so the first class that we took at the weekend retreat uh, for Crop and Create Delivered was a titling class by Megan Andrew. And this was the page that introduced her class. And it says, a title can be beautifully designed, but more importantly, it serves as an introduction to the story on your page. Instead of neglecting it until the end of your page design, prioritize it with a place of prominence and customize it with carefully selected words and special details. And I found that really interesting because um, it is one of the things I leave kind of to the end. Like, I always try to, like, imagine what space I'll put the title in, but I don't always come up with my title first. So that was an interesting perspective. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. And then this was the intro to her class. So I took it out of the bag ahead of time, and here is one layout that we did this was the single pager and so this um title is stamped mostly using this um title builder heart and home and it is a crop and create exclusive stamp so that was kind of cool and one of the things i really thought that was neat is that this heart is not complete it's meant to like go attach itself to the letters so i don't know if you can pick that up on camera but there's one here which is cool and the title on this one says home is where love lives and it was done with the bungalow lane collection by Paige Evans and American Crafts so um, I did most of this layout I just need to finish the journaling add something to the tag hole here because I don't like to leave them empty and then I think I'm pretty much finished for that one so I need to do that and then I'm going to do the same for this one so this was the two page one and also with bungalow lane and it says love your beautiful kind sweet heart so that was making use of some of those um, words from the what do you call it are they still called thickers they're like home sweet home foil foam stickers foil foam so they're foam on the back and then cardstock on the front so i guess they're still thickers but <clears throat> anyways so we used some of those and then also um this is stamped and popped up and stamped and then some sticker letters for that so for this one i think i have a little bit of embellishing still to do like this tag needs a string in it and i think that's pretty much it and then i need to get the journaling on here so i'm gonna get the journaling and the dates for these two layouts and then i will come back and we will talk about what we're gonna do with the rest of this kit because there's quite a bit of um not a ton of paper left but there's quite a bit of product left all right all right so here is my one page layout all finished up and i did the journaling onto my tag megan actually did a tutorial on how to print onto tags and whatnot um, using microsoft word and um, I've been doing this for years, so I didn't actually watch the tutorial, but if anybody else wants a tutorial, just leave a note in the comments and I can do one of those. Um, this is um, all colored in now because I don't know if you noticed when I showed it the first time, but this um, stamped word had some smudges on it. And so I went and found a pink tri-blend marker from the last crop and create that I took and I just colored in the letters so that it wouldn't show um, 
the ink smudge. And what else did I do? I stamped a date. Um, for this story, I really took to heart what Stacy Julian had shared about, you know, making your stories matter. Not every page needs to be a masterpiece with an, ex you know, extravagant story, but make sure those stories get told too. So um, this one says, I was visiting Brandon. So this is my oldest son, his wife, and their two kids. And it says, I was visiting Brandon, Alicia, and the kids less than a year after they moved into this house. There was a moment where I was cozy on the couch, cuddling little Emmy. I could smell the dinner that Alicia was cooking and was watching Quentin play with his cars on the floor while a Disney movie played in the background. When the front door opened, Quentin and Nova ran to the door. The word daddy was shouted as Brandon came in and I thought, just how much this place feels like their forever home. And my mommy heart was full, so full for my boy and his beautiful life that he and Alicia had made for themselves. So instead of just saying, you know, this is their forever home, they're such a beautiful little family, I picked a particular moment that I remembered and I told the story of that moment and I feel like it just gives that little bit more, um, like when Quentin reads this when he is 15 or 20, he'll be able to picture that, right? So that's my one pager and I just need to um, photograph it tomorrow when the sun comes up. I'm sorry for the shadows and the, the you're going to get some glare because it's literally always dark here. I just don't have time to record in the few hours of daylight that we get in the winter months. Um, I'm always working <laughs> or with family or wherever I'm needed, but anyways. Okay, so then this one is my two page. Yeah, see, there's the glare, I'm sorry. Just move that out of the way a little. But then it's so dark. Okay, <laughs> yeah, see, I can't win. Okay, um, so this is my two page one. And I'm so sorry, the gold on here. Okay, so what did I do with this one? I added some journaling. Now I wasn't present for this particular moment, but his, her mommy wants it in her album. She sends me photos of things that she wants included in the album. So. Um, this was a day that I wasn't there, but I just kind of write down what mommy says in text and then sometimes I add a little something. So this one says, Amelia had a super fun morning at Hewitt's Fun Farm with mommy, daddy, Quentin, Nana, Papa, and T. She tried all the fun things. Mummy even helped her onto a tricycle. It was a fabulous fall day to head into the pumpkin patch to check out all the plump pumpkins ready for taking home. That precious little smile of hers melts everyone's heart. She is such a sweet little girl and she is so loved. And then I just looked up the date, stamped that on there. I added what is reflecting into your eyeballs <laughs> with my lights. The, um, these are gold word stickers. This one says, oh, happy day. This one says a perfect way to spend the day. And this one says, remember this. And the reason I added those was because um, I had actually dropped a my stamp here and so there was a big pink mark in the corner I don't know if you noticed it or not probably not on the other the first beginning part of the layout or of the video and then this so I put this washi tape here and it just didn't I could still see because it's kind of clear and I just borrowed this washi tape from the traveler's notebook kit and then I had these I have like a I don't know if I I probably showed this on my room tour but it's just like a napkin holder and it holds like my word sticker books and I had uh, a pack of like gold gold ones gold foil word strips and so I thought they would go nicely with this layout to cover up my mistake and then I just put a couple more on there to balance it out um, I also added a piece of Mm, Baker's, I don't know if it's Baker's twine, twine onto this tag. And I think that's all I did. I stamped the date. Yeah. So anyways, this layout's now complete. I need to take a picture of it during the daylight hours when I can for my Instagram. And then I will be able to post that. Uh, 
and then it'll go into my pile of completed layouts for the month of November. I was like, what month are we in? Wow, my brain is not working today. Okay, so then this is what is left over. So I have these few little, um, sorry, I'm gonna put my lights back where they were before, before I showed the other layout because it's just so dark in here. Okay, so I have these enamel dots from Close to My Heart, gold glitter dots, um, still left in the kit, even though I used them on a bunch of other layouts. And then I use, I still have quite a few of these title alphabet stickers that came with this class kit from Ellie Studio. I took that zipper bag that I had my thermo web make and take in and I finished, um, I did fussy cut whatever was left of that sheet of leaves. I finished fussy cutting them and then I just loved this heart. So this is the back of the heart, the leaf pattern paper. So the ones that were, I don't know, not complete or like covered up by other leaves. I punched some hearts on to use on the heart side and I think I had one loose here. And then I had the kit included two of these tag sheets and it's tags on both sides. And so I um, used, like, I don't know if you recognize these two on the first layout. So I used this one and this one, so these two on that first layout. And then I just took the rest of that sheet and I cut it up so that the tags are um, already to use. And then I just left this one intact. And then I put those in this bag as well. And then I have um, these like strips and scraps of like smaller scraps of paper. So I'm just gonna set that aside. And the reason I'm keeping these long white strips is because this is perfect for mounting washi tape if I don't um, if I don't want it to show through, right? So I keep those until I'm done with the kit. Um, okay, so what did I say? Okay, I did this already, the bows. And then I have, okay, my lights are gonna give me grief. Okay, sorry, I apologize for the glare. Let's see. Okay, so this is the um, cardstock foam stickers, and I still have a lot of that left. I'm gonna keep the stamp with this what I'm doing here. This is my like cut apart stuff. And then I have a little more than half a sheet of this paper. And I used for this one, where's my layout? I don't know if you noticed, but on this two pager, I used like these little scalloped circles but I didn't just fussy cut them. I like cut a strip and then I took a one inch circle punch and punched out the half circles and then I pushed them together. See how they're kind of like separated on here? I pushed them together to make that scallop border. And I think she said we could, you know, punch them or fussy cut them or whatever in her video, but that's what I chose to do. And a one inch circle punch worked perfectly for what I was trying to accomplish there. So I have that scrap of paper. So this is the only full sheet of paper that I had left was this one. Um, I have this partial scrap. I have this, um, so I used that one cut apart card to journal on my two page layout. And that's what that looks like. So that's that card. And then on the back is this like green paper, flower, grass, I don't know. Then we have a little bit of this quilted pattern left and on the back is this yellow leaf. Then we have this like faded pink coral, I guess, star. And then on this side is the square piece so that I, I didn't wanna throw, or I didn't wanna hide the whole sheet behind so I like gutted the paper 
Um, if you've never seen that before and you would like to see a tutorial, leave it in the comments. I can show you how to do that too. My hair is apparently glued into the layout. Nothing like leaving a little DNA behind. Okay, so there's that. So I cut that center piece out and this is what's left of it. It's that faded star. Um, this one, I used this side for some matting. This was mat how I matted the photo on the one page layout and this is what's on the back side. Then I have two pieces of white cardstock and I am going to actually slide these into the drawer of white cardstock to my left because um, that's just where I'm going to keep it because I feel like if I was going to make a layout and use white cardstock I would just pull the door drawer open. I don't need to keep it in here it just makes more bulk in the class kit um, or in the storage once I put it away. So these however are matched to the colors of the, the papers and so I'm going to keep them and it is one sheet of basil Let's see what color is it? Sunbeam and one sheet of blue Calypso. So I'm gonna leave those with these papers as for background sheets. And then I have this almost full sheet of cards, or sorry, chipboard pieces, uh, copper foil chipboard stickers. So these I used, one of the buttons over here and then these leaves and then one butterfly and a button here. So there's still quite a bit left in there. So I feel like paper-wise, we have a couple of backgrounds. We have um, quite a few scraps. Sorry. I'm trying to work in my limited space here. I like to spread out. Anybody else do that? So then I got my scraps of paper here that go with the collection and my first thought was I'm going to the scrapbook store and because I had to take my kid to the airport to go back to university and I thought well I can run across the highway to the scrapbook store and buy me some more bungalow lane and then I thought I really don't need another piece of paper I own so much paper so I decided to go along with, I don't know if you guys have ever watched um, Janet at RTS Scrapbooking. Um, she does something called the SOS method where she, um, to save money, she'll buy one sheet or two sheets of a collection and then she'll take one of the multicolored sheets and she will match the colors to make her own paper collection of that. So I pulled this sheet of paper out and I went to my rainbow rack and I picked out some papers that I felt like matched really well with this collection and this is what I came up with I got um, just a little rainbow of papers that coordinates and so just very basic patterns but the colors match so I have like a craft card stock kind of um, pattern this is from Daily Stories by Teresa Collins 2014 this is from the dots and stripes at Echo Park and it is from 2012 and it it could be used on the stripe side or the dot side but I put it on the stripe side because I had a dot here this one is a jelly bean soup this green one um, soup staples too. green salt and it also has a chevron on the back in the exact same color 2012 I have this sheet which I thought would make a great background and it is from Echo Park as well the splash collection from 2011 and on the other side is another color that goes perfectly well with the colors in this collection so I thought this would be good and then this yellow um, from basic gray high knees four square 
from 2012. I may have a lot of 2012 paper. That might have been when I went paper happy. And this is an old Stampin' Up! paper. And it was just like a color, a paper pack that came with a whole bunch of different colors. And this is one of them. So I don't know if you can see in the corner there. Stampin' Up! So I think it's an old paper. It's printed right on there. But I thought that was a good core uh, group of not just... I didn't just pay attention to what colors, although I did want the colors to match, of course, but I also paid attention to like, I didn't want five sheets of dots and I didn't want five sheets of stripes. I wanted a bunch of different patterns. So, and I didn't want anything that didn't go well with this collection. So this collection has a lot of leaves and flowers and buttons and home. Um, so I didn't want it to have like, lightning bolts or you know something that just didn't coordinate I wanted it to feel homey so that's what I came up with I have red orangish yellow blue green pink and a brown and so I feel like now I have my own version of a collection kit for bungalow lane with some coordinating card stock and a whole ton of embellishments, title options, title option, more stickers, all these punched pieces and tags. I have this uh, stamp set for more titling and image options. And then I'm just going to keep this, those little scraps in there so that if I want to use them, I can. And then I'm just going to put the back into this bag that I got from the kit, the bag that it came in. And I'm just going to put it away in this bag. And I will grab the box of collection kits that still has some space in it and I will put it right into the box if you just give me a second I should have grabbed that sorry I'm talking from so far away I, I uh, forgot to grab that before I started recording so anyways here's my box of collection kits that I pull a lot of them are ones that I pulled off that wire rack if you watched that video and if you'd like to see where I keep these things the there is a room tour video on my channel I can link it below and so that's just gonna go in there it goes better this way this box is getting full too okay so now I have a bungalow lane collection kit and that will just go back on my shelf so that is what I did with my um, class number one it is the projects are completed and ready to get put into albums and the collection leftovers have been managed and put away in my space if you enjoyed this video um, please just click that like button and give me a thumbs up hit the show more button under the video description if you'd like to find links to some of the things that we talked about today and if you have a question or a comment please leave it down below I will get back to you just as soon as I can. If you would like to see more of my videos, it would make my day to have you as a subscriber. Just click the subscribe button and be sure to hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when a new video goes up. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Have a great day, everyone.